Welcome back to the rehearsal, hall, everybody, with Diana Krall, our special guest tonight. We were speaking, and I hope you caught the conversation earlier, a little bit about Jimmy Rolls, one of your mentors, one of the people who encouraged you, taught you how to play piano, encouraged you to sing by saying, I don't give a, just sing. Well, he was just, a, he was just, that okay. was his manner, yeah, and he, he, he was trying to make light of it. Like, if you want to sing, sing, like, just, just sing and be yourself, you know. You're not Sarah Vaughn, so don't try to be. So... <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Rolls, uh, Ray Brown, who was married to Ella Fitzgerald, you studied with him and, and worked with him also, and, and Oscar Peterson, who also worked with Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. you seeing a pattern here? These three guys who worked closely with Ella Fitzgerald and then went on to work closely and arguably mentor you as well, did they tell you any of her secrets? Of Ella's secrets? You're no. sworn to secrecy. No, no. I no? don't know if I ever asked. So, so what did you learn from those guys? The, 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 oh, sort of the builders is in front of me. Like right now, what I learned from them is uh, to keep moving forward and to keep learning and always being a, to be a student uh, in a way that you're you're always like. When the wonderful thing about being an artist is that you you can never stop. You never kind of go okay. It's never finished. Here it is. Yeah. And then I'm going to yeah. It's never finished, and it's always challenging, and there's always new challenges that you create for yourself because you stay inspired. I mean, I'm sitting in the car with John Clayton this morning and. Um, I've known him now for and his family for 20 years, and I'm still there. There are times, um, like about every nanosecond, where I'm asking for, "What do you think of this?" or "What do you think of this?" or "It's it's a wonderful place to be in." Um, and at the same time, they're uh, creatively inspiring for me, as they have been since I was 16 years old. I heard a piano player named Monty Alexander, mm -hmm. and Jeff and John played with them, so I played along with all those records. I wanted to just. My goal was to play with Ray Brown and uh, Nerd Alert, but you know, it was like my goal as a 16-year-old kid, and it, and it never changed. And since then, I've I've become very close friends with Oscar Peterson, who uh, is just you know my idol and one of my well since I was a little girl. And one of the reasons why I play jazz is because of a record he did called Night Train. Yeah. So that's what that's, we call that's, a, that's what we call constant. a seminal record in jazz, Night Train. Yeah. Does that does that artistic drive curiosity you're talking about the the drive over here with John? Does that ever switch off for you? Do you ever can you turn it off? Do you ever want to turn it off? It transfers to the kitchen and how to cook for 9-month-old twin boys. <laughs> that's easy. A blender and some carrots. Oh yeah, right. You stay in the hotel room and it's like, "Okay, what am I doing now? I'm going to order some macaroni and cheese and then I'm going to, you know, squish it in my fingers and but that must it. be a great distraction because it takes you totally outside of, of of your art and of your 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 profession it does but i'm i'm really interested in other things i mean whatever i do whether it's i'm, I'm skiing or or i love to to ride horses or anything that i do i, I tend to be kind of intensely intense about it and i enjoy it all? Mountain biking? Not really. Oh, too bad. I, I mean, know some great trails. It's hard to take anyway, it on the road. But we're we're going to take a little break and talk <laughs> about sports. Sports. <laughs> and come back with Diana Krall live at the rehearsal hall. Stay tuned. There's lots more with Diana Krall after the break. No, they can't take that away from me. Can't take that away from me. Welcome back to the rehearsal hall tonight. Our special guest is Diana Krall. I, I met you years and years ago, and I've seen you perform in, in all kinds of different venues ever since, and it's, and it's been a pleasure to watch you grow and watch your, your career blossom. And I, and I have to say that now, to me, you seem much more comfortable with the, the showbiz aspect of being an artist, because when I first met you, you were very focused and very driven and, and very much about the music. Of course, now you've played before thousands and thousands of people, and you seem much more comfortable when you're on stage with the the kind of the showbiz aspect of being a, a jazz performer. Well, I still hide behind a piano and a microphone. You don't see me getting up and doing any kind of, here I am, you know, I, I'm not very good at holding a microphone. It's kind of awkward. Well, it's an unnatural thing, actually, and you can, yeah, yeah. you can be, do you, do you have a preference? Do you, do you prefer to be in front of an audience, or do you prefer to be uh, in, a, in a studio? I prefer to be in front of an audience performing, but I also love working in the studio two very different things mm -hmm. it's it's always i don't know it, what do you get from a studio that you don't get from an audience or vice versa well it's a studio is a snapshot of where you are at the time and it's a documentation and you listen to yourself back and you're making your you're, you're you're making a painting you know you're putting together a piece that's all going to when when you that old expression of dropping the needle on the record when it comes off you put it back to the beginning and it makes sense so it's a very different process but something that is a, one of tremendous growth in a, in a mm -hmm. short amount of time and then you live with it 
and then you let it Forever. go, and then you yeah. move, then you move on. And for me, I make a record, and it's all about making it. And then once it's done, you know, I listen to it and enjoy it for a week, and then I'm on to the next. Do you listen to your own records? No. 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 I bet most people here do, though. <laughs> what? Listen to your records. No, I mean, I, do I sit around and listen to my records? I mean, if I hear it somewhere, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. But. Uh, yeah. Or if I need to learn something that I recorded ten years ago, <laughs> I will. But um, so, what does yeah. the audience give you then that the studio doesn't? If the studio is a, is a snapshot of that moment of your artistic uh, arc, then what is the performance in front of an audience? Well, they, they give you inspiration. It's like Lenny Bruce. I know you're out there. You know, as like a, it's, it's like an oil painting out there. You know, you're not moving. It's you, they give you energy and inspiration. Um, we just played in. It doesn't matter how many people either. It, it could be a lot of people, hopefully a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> or you know, or your, or your, or or five. Yeah, I mean, I also enjoy playing at home and. Do you? I, yeah. I have to ask because you, you've married a musician, a guy named Elvis Costello. May have heard of him. <laughs> Two musicians in the house now. Do you bring yeah. work home? Yeah. You do. Well, work. Depends on what you're... I, use, I, mean, I mean, work in the context yeah, of your well, profession. Yeah, well, we have to work at home because mm -hmm. that's what we do, mm -hmm. you know. But we also uh, uh, play um, wooden xylophones play? right now. And uh, <laughs> the, 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 the whistle that goes... You know, and, um, you know, a lot of this kind of yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. Banging together measuring cups and lots of Tupperware. Perfect. I'm going to have my Tupperware band. Elvis and Diana, the <laughs> Muppet years. Well, we were talking earlier about your, your live performances, and, and you did a fantastic one here, and it was a, a really novel uh, setting for a concert back in 2004 at Union Station. Um, and we're going to take you back and, and uh, hear a couple of those numbers now. Or one, at least. 